Here, let me go ahead and preheat the Coda. Well guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a whole wheat pizza dough with a pre-ferment called a poolish. So if you wanna make some killer pies that turn out like this, keep watching. A poolish is a pre-ferment that's 100% hydration. That means at any scale, the ratio of flour to water is always one to one. For my recipe, start by measuring 305 grams of double zero flour and an eighth of a teaspoon of instant yeast. Now, active dry yeast works perfectly too. Just make sure you bloom it in the measurement of water before you add it to the flour. Give the mixture a quick stir. And since this ratio is one to one, add 305 grams of room temperature water to the bowl. And since we're using instant yeast, there's no need for warm water because the yeast doesn't need to be bloomed. This is also an extended fermentation. So there's plenty of time for the yeast to activate and do their thing. Now grab a fork and stir all the ingredients until the mixture is super smooth and uniform in texture. This, my friends, is your poolish. It couldn't be any easier, right? Now, cut a piece of plastic film or pick up one of these sexy elastic lids and cover your poolish tightly. Then let it ferment at room temp for six to eight hours. So for this recipe, I decided to break out the stand mixer, but you can totally need this by hand if you don't have one. In fact, I find it much more gratifying. Just not today. Anyway, the poolish is ready when it becomes super gassy, has doubled in size, and has sort of a pleasant yeasty smell. Go ahead and add the pre-ferment to the bowl along with the rest of the final dose ingredients. That includes another 104 grams of double zero flour and 273 grams of whole wheat flour. Next, add 18 grams of fine sea salt along with another 159 grams of room temp water. Just a heads up, if you're looking for ounce conversions, take a look in the description box below the video. Sorry guys, no volume measurements this time. Chances are if you're watching this video and you love pizza making as much as I do, then you should own a scale. Just saying. Alrighty, snap that bowl in place, slap on the dough hook, and knead the mixture on medium low speed until you have a smooth and cohesive dough. This should take about seven to eight minutes. And if you've watched some of my other pizza making videos, you'll notice that I skipped that typical 20 minute rest that I give the dough after it comes together. I wanted to see what would happen if I didn't do it. And I gotta say, the results are still pretty good. Even though this dough is at 68% hydration, it'll appear much drier than that. And I think the whole wheat flour has something to do with that since it's not quite as refined as double zero. Anyways, once it's smooth, grab the dough from the bowl and place it on your work surface. Form it into a tight ball by rolling it around in a circle with your hands. Now this motion, along with the friction that's created on the counter, will increase the surface tension of your dough and give it a smooth, round appearance. Now place the dough in a lightly greased bowl Cover it up again, let it rest at room temp for two hours, then place it in the fridge for 24 hours. At this point, your whole wheat dough should have doubled in size, so pull it straight from the fridge and turn it out onto the work surface. I forgot to do this, but I'd recommend dusting your counter with some flour before working with the dough at all. Now, sprinkle the surface of the dough with some flour as well. This will help keep it from sticking to your scraper. Then cut the dough into four equal size pieces that should weigh right around 290 grams each. Feel free to weigh and adjust the size of each portion if you want to get super precise about how even they are. Next, grab a piece of that dough and roll it around on the counter just like you did for the bulk dough. Do this for each portion and in the end, you should have four perfectly round dough balls ready for another stint of cold fermentation. If you have a narrow fridge like me, then use individually greased containers instead of a dough box. I actually prefer this method because I can stack them, shove the containers in the corner of my fridge and forget about them for a few days. Not to mention they take up very little space. So slap a lid on each container and let the dough cold ferment for about 36 to 48 hours. Now through additional testing, I found out that this dough turns out a better pizza with that slightly longer fermentation. For reference, the pizza in my thumbnail is from a 48 hour dough and the dough right here is only 36 and it's what I used for making pizza in this video. All right, let's make some pizza. Start by decently flouring your work surface so your dough doesn't stick, then grab a portion and carefully turn it out onto the counter. Gravity will do most of the work here, or at least it should. Ah, there we go. Now flour the top of your dough so it doesn't stick to your fingers and begin to shape it by pressing out from the center and toward the edge. Do this all the way around the dough to form the outer crust. Now flip it over and continue the process of pressing out and establishing that cornicione. At this point, pick up the dough with your knuckles and gently stretch it out until you have a circle that's about 13 to 14 inches in diameter. For the first pizza, I always like to make a pizza margarita. It's sort of my control pizza, if you will. 
So grab 80 grams of San Marzano pizza sauce and spread it evenly over the dough, up to about an inch or so from the edge. Follow that up with 113 grams of fresh mozzarella torn into little pieces. Now, the smaller they are, the quicker they'll melt, so keep that in mind. Add a handful of some fresh basil leaves to the pizza, then top it with a good drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, and this baby's ready for some heat. Grab a peel that's been dusted with a little bit of flour, then carefully pull the pizza onto it and reshape it if needed. Now, you could also build the pizza directly on the peel, but I've had issues with sticking, especially on metal pizza peels like this. Launch the pizza into the uni with a stone temp of about 825 degrees Fahrenheit and the flame at 100%. Quickly turn the flame down by half and bake the pizza for 30 seconds. Rotate it a little and continue baking for another 30. Now repeat the process for a total of 90 seconds to two minutes until you have a pizza that's fully baked and looks like this. Okay, let's do a second pizza that's completely different. I have another piece of dough stretched out and then I'm gonna add some thinly sliced mortadella. Then I have this tasty mixture of chopped pistachio, a little bit of minced garlic and some fresh oregano from the garden. And of course, some extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna spread that out all over the pizza directly on top of the mortadella. Next, add some fresh mozzarella. I'd say 113 grams is a pretty solid measurement for this pizza. Of course, I can't forget that nutty, sweet, and slightly salty flavor of Parmigiano cheese. So let's add a little bit of that on top. Next, I'm gonna finish the pizza off with just a bit more of that pistachio mixture. It's so good, I just can't seem to get enough of it. Okay, onto the peel it goes. I'll do a quick reshape of the pizza, then into the uni for yet another bake. In terms of flavor combinations, I gotta say guys, I think this one rivals my mushroom, caramelized onion and crema pizza. But as far as the dough goes, well, let's take a quick peek inside of the crust for some results. Personally, I think this crust looks pretty darn good, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Now this is the part I've been waiting for all day, the taste test. And the verdict? Well, I'll let my expression speak for itself.